And now Houston, Texas, make some noise because the time for talk is over. It's time to unleash the fury. I have these conversations in my head daily about amateur fighters still picking and choosing and not wanting to fight the toughest fights in the amateurs. Don't you know? it, like, it doesn't help you. Not at all. It doesn't help you, man. Like you, you can you can pad your record and take the easy fights. We but, we know people that have one hundred percent. And and I'm all, and I'm still kicking this shit around in my head daily about why people don't want to take the Josh Van route, the Cody Steele route. I wonder, Sean Kennard. I, I, I wonder if if Joe it's Hinshaw. if it's a uh, what is it? No. Maybe it's a it's a, a lack of. I mean, I I don't know, man. Like a lack of of. Come, I, I don't know the word I'm trying to say, man. Like, but their co- belief, like a lack of belief in themselves. Yeah, or a lack of belief in themselves, or do they still not trust the promotion? Or do you think it's a uh, hmm. the entitled like? I deserve a better fighter. Well, no, I I think like when, when you look at you look at a, a, a Joe Hendershot, it's a great example. That kid fought all nothing his, but, nothing but tough Amis, fights. But all his Amy fights were Fury. They're all with Fury, and they were tough fights. Like he di- he didn't have easy fights. Now in there. I would love to see him do all of his pro fights with us. Yeah, and then we put him into the UFC. I agree, straight out of Fury. I, and, and, and I feel like it's a it's a lot easier for us. To build the guy, gauge the uh, level of competition, where he's at, everything. If he sticks with us from Amy through the pros. But then, yeah. like, just because in the Amis there's no contracts and stuff, you get these guys that bounce around and want to go fight in Louisiana, want to go fight for the other promotion down south in Houston, in Texas, yeah. other promotion in Houston, go to Oklahoma. And it's like, what's the purpose, you know? That, I think, comes back to the coaches. I think, I think the coaches – have um, you, you know, some coaches see our show and and they get overwhelmed. Coaches get, get, they just get gotta talk to us. Get overwhelmed, and I I think you have to. They have to realize what we are doing. We are providing a training grounds, just like just like you are for your fighter who's getting ready for a fight. We're providing you basically a pro experience from day one, and and I I feel like that's what separates how how good our amateurs are you know i i don't think there's another 145er in the nation that i wouldn't pick joe hendershot against or damien aranda against you know and and you look at saw that in aliman before he turned pro yeah yeah uh, and granted let's let's because you're gonna have some asshole say yeah well now he's zero and one as a pro look who he fought he fought a (laughs) monster in tony toro and who was a great amateur fighter 100 percent. and and i you know i have a different belief than some other coaches do i don't believe that coming up as a pro that your early fights should all be easy fights I think you need to have, yeah, you get some easy fights, but you also, you should have some wars and the opportunity comes up to get that, that, that battle hardy, hard readiness, you know, early in your career. I would rather Josh have had that crazy fight he had with Tony on his first pro fight than have it at they five and distance, one right? with the distance. Yeah, so he didn't then finish. Imagine, but imagine having that fight a lot more. at seven wins and eight wins and then he loses more. that fight. Now you're set back I even more. I say that all the time. If you're going to take a L, you. You should probably take it in your first three. Yeah. yeah. First three fights. Take take it. I mean, uh, uh, again, Josh Van's a great example. Josh Van lost to Devin Jackson. Second fight, right? Sec, second fight. And that was a fight that, look, when we talk about, like, back then, what Josh's weaknesses were, it was wrestling. Right. You know, and, and, and it got exposed during that fight. He lost that fight because he got controlled on the ground. He learned what he needed to work on. You, you 100% right, because what happened since then? Nobody takes Josh Van down. Like that dude work, do. and he 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 gets right up if they Unless do. Unless you want your calf sliced, he calf slices them. Dude, <laughs> that was so cool. And like I, I think that again is when you look at I, when you think about this, and I mean I am amazed at, at Joe Hendershot because when you look at the guys he fought, like he lost to Brian James, who ended up being four and one or five, like amazing fighter. He beats Damian Aranda. He beats Devin Jones. He beats Zeke Cates. These are all. I'm. I'm literally. If I if I was to name wow. the top forty fivers in Texas, yeah, I mean they're not I easy just fights. Named those guys. Like we yeah. could have a forty five amateur Grand Prix and a forty five pro. Yeah. Grand Prix. I was talking to Bob Perez yesterday, and 
the two four card has like yeah a shitload of featherweights and they're almost all his. Yeah, I and I spoke with him yesterday bro. too. Cody Freeman, Eduardo Tejada, yep, Yadier, all his Macario, yeah. Jacob Berry? Yeah. That's five featherweights yeah. on the card. That's five featherweight fights on the card. The Fury Main Street Invitational. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you and, know. and Bob has <clears throat> took a lot of – and much love to Bob because he's taken a lot of uh, confidence. He's put a lot of confidence in us now to where he sent me a roster last week and he had a list of all his yeah. enemies, his females, whatever. And he's like, bro, these are all yours. Like, yeah. Take them. I trust That's you awesome, to man. do the right – and dude, I love that. Yeah, that and was. I the, wish more teams. You know, that was the same conversation I had with him yesterday. Um, we're looking. I mean, we're looking to, to match Becca Irwin. Mm-hmm. We're you know we're lo- we're looking to get her matched up, so and she runs into some problems that I I very much understand as a coach. You know, on Bob's side, he's like, she's a she's a debut MMA fighter, hundred percent right. right. She's gonna be like but Nadia. But she, yes, like she also years. has more experience on her feet than almost 100%. any other female we're going to find. And as the coach on the other side, it's like, damn, do I want to send my person for, into that buzzsaw? And I think that's where you have to have the mentality again, like we talked about. I can tell you that the fire that's been lit in Josh Aliman's ass right. since that Tony Toro fight, right. he's a different dude. Yeah. And now he's got the confidence. His last two fights, his last amateur fight was Arlton Audrey for five rounds. And then he goes out and he goes a three round almost fighter of the year with Tony Toro. His confidence is through the roof. Right now he's like, who's going to stop me? Who's, and and honestly, when I sit back and think about it, I don't know. I don't know. And now, dude, I am so excited for this year. Dude, Hendershot, Thomas. Is it Thompson or Thomas? I always say his name wrong. Josh Thomas. Josh Thomas. You've got, you've got Kyle Toad, Toad Drank. Toad Drank. Toad Drank. Ali Mon coming back. Like, we got to get him in these, studio. These are all of our early guys in, in the career. Aranda's going to fight for the vacant. This doesn't even count when we flop to our mm-hmm. experienced guys. You've got the Torres's, the Aswells, the Yadier. I mean, uh, the, the Macario. Macario, like Loham. It is on our 45, di- for whatever Camillo. reason, for whatever reason, our 45 division in amateur and pro, like you said, we, we we could run a tournament of the best in the nation, and they're all right here. Sean Shelby's going to have so much fun in the next Dude. two years with these featherweights. How come he doesn't ever come out to a show? He's got to come see these guys in person. He's not He's not trying to leave Vegas. Yeah. Like, we're lucky. We're lucky that Mick, we're lucky lives, Mick here. lives here. Yeah. Mick flies all the way out here. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> flies all the way up the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes away. Ten minutes away. Yeah, Look it's, it's – man. Didn't, didn't they make a helipad back there? Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, right we behind have Escapade. A, we have an Escapade helipad. The Maynard pad. We got him an underground tunnel. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's called the Dingo Tunnel. He the just, Dingo Tunnel. It goes straight from here to the bar. <laughs> 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 One more. Do oh. they got like a conveyor belt? That's his. That's his drink belt. That's yeah. that. That's what just keeps bringing the drinks. They just set them out at different times, and slowly they get there by the time you finish. But for them all out. the Houston coaches, man, we're all about opportunity and making opportunity for yeah. you guys. If you got young guys in the gym, and these dudes <clears throat> are focused on one day being in the UFC. Our whole thing every for y'all is to put them in there. Like, yeah. We do our best to match them, match them fairly, give them the right matches at the right times on the right cards, get them the exposure that they need, and hopefully have that conversation with the higher uppers and put them in there. You mentioned his confidence is super high. Is yeah. there a moment as a coach where you can have to, hey, bring in, bring that confidence down to No, you wanna you know, there's a difference in in confidence, cockiness, and bravado. And I and I think that you have to to nurture confidence, and you have to respect and allow some cockiness. Like, listen, if, if you're not if Joe Hendricks, I keep bringing up Joe because I'm. I've, so this last few weeks, all I've been focusing on is fights of the year, fighters of the year. I, I've been doing all this research, and I was blown away by Joe's year. Like he was very, very close to getting it. Had Olivia not defending her title three times, Joe would have been that damage. I talked to Damian Aranda a little bit through text yesterday, though, and uh, he said he did like five fights in six months or something. He would have been a great candidate he, too, he, man. He wouldn't have been a bad candidate. Yeah, at all. he's Your right there, stud, right man. there in the Here's discussion. Aranda is a stud. To me, oh, yeah. both Aranda is yeah. A stud. To me, I just put I, I just put the, the title yeah. fights a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, Have, having three title fights to get him higher. And right. I was about to ask, is Austin like but you know, what getting was, ready to make a jump? But what I was saying <laughs> is uh, yeah. that you look at a guy like and even Damien. Damien Aranda is the nicest, 
most humble. Oh, He's yeah, a martial man. artist. Yeah, but I, I can what, tell what blew me in every away, sense of the word, man. Yeah, what blew me away about him is when he decided to come back and yeah. fight, and I was like, wait. How many years has it been? You're only 25. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> it's aren't, been seven aren't years. Aren't you 30? No. But, and this and this is to answer to your question. When I talk about he, he's very humble, he's very respectful. But I can yeah. tell you now his belief in himself is borders on the line of, right. no one's going to fuck with me. And you have oh, to have big that. Gorilla yeah. Drew behind you, him, too. You, you have to have that. Yeah. When you walked into the cage, you know, like, Man, I never I'm thought not, I was going to I'm not fucking walking out here with an L. Yeah, never. I'm smashing this dude going home. That's like, it. that's that's what my you think. My wife's sitting right there. Right there. I can't lose in front of her. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, like, I never, I as a coach, I never want to bring back the confidence. But there, it has to be truthful confidence. Right. There's, there's fighters we see who have fought nobody, have done nothing, and they're confident. In their abilities, man. Well, you, that's that's hollow. That's a yeah. hollow confidence. I can tell you that all these forty fivers that we just named, Kyle, Kyle Toe Drink, that dude's got confidence through the roof as he should, and he because he's a Fury, bad bro. dude. Like that's what, uh, one thing about that kid is he loves. Oh, dude, Fury. Like he loves. Yeah, Fury, man. man. Yeah. I'm gonna get, Hey, Kyle, I'm gonna get you a bag of Fury gear. At the next show, hey, I tell you, so, so we had our me. we had our promotions Fill it up. Uh, for for Gloves, war for war shirts, training food. center and, and my strong style gym, you know, and we're we're affiliates so on. I seen you with the gear, yeah, baby. baby. Rarely, rarely. So on, I seen on, you with that gear on, on Tuesday. We had we had our our year end of the year promotions. Walk in. And uh, hey, first of all, shout out to uh, Josh Mahone. We gave we gave him his black belt. He he survived awesome, the, the, our little gorilla gorilla mob black belt experience. The, I, I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about it in just a second. But what I wanted to get was with Kyle walking the door, and the first thing Kyle said, "It's not hey, it's not hi, it's like man, I fucking love Fury." Like that's the first thing he says. It's not even like hey, Rich. Yeah. Hey man, like it, it's He's awesome. I, man. I fucking love Fury. He's, he's fucking yeah, awesome. we, hey, we've got to get him on the podcast sometime, man. I want I want to peel back the curtain just a, a he's little good for bit a sound bite. on something that we do for our black belts at at War. Y'all put him to sleep. Yeah, a little bit, but also so what happens is. You, uh, there is a life changing experience you go through. They teabag where you basically are battling other black belts, people who are already black Jeremy belts. Jeremy runs that shit like it's the fucking Marines, yeah, or whatever. Like, dude, dude, camp. dude, let me I tell believe you, it. Let me right. tell you the room that Josh Mahone had to go through on Tuesday. Like, let me ask one thing. Yeah, did y'all put him on his back and like? Pour the water hose on his face. <laughs> <laughs> That's water did, did you waterboard him? Like water, yeah, like I try can tell drown you, him with the water. Yeah, you got to you 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 put a towel over his face I can first. Tell you there were yeah, moments. That. There were moments he would have preferred that. There were moments he would have preferred that. So this is the room. Was Morono there? Uh, no, I thought I saw Morono there. No, no, no. He's not. He's uh, not a black belt in this industry. For, just, right, it, was for other, us. it was other guys. Their head shaved. I saw Ivy was there. Yeah, dude. He had he had Anthony Ivy. He had Trevin Giles, Trevin Giles Bruce Whitehead, okay. Josh that, Altum. Yeah. Uh, he had to- big ass Tony Fitz. Oh yeah. damn! Right, and then he had Sijin. We had Raul. We had Renan. So he was Chavez. happy when he rolled with Sijin. Yeah, that was a break. <laughs> that was a break. You had you had you had me and and Copley. He had Copley. I think, I think it was he was, ha- thir- he was happy to roll with Copley and Sijin. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Hey, hey, listen. <laughs> Hey, Copley's mean. Hey, Copley. Yeah, <laughs> I can I can see hey, it, man. Copley's jacked up, bro. He's doing, like, hey, when we talk sh- about yeah, he's like doing the P ninety X workout or yeah. something, man. I see him getting no, shredded. I guarantee he does about a thousand shoulder shrugs. Oh, dude, night. you can definitely yeah, traps, you can definitely man. see like the gorilla mob style in everyone, yeah, yeah. just smashing awesome, faces and and so like it's this it's this really cool experience that that we all go through, but we all kind of sit back and we're like. Damn, he had the worst room out of everybody. Yeah. Like, like you, I think it was thirteen black belts. Well, I think as y'all continue to promote black belts, whoever gets promoted <laughs> yeah. next is gonna have the worst yeah. room. Oh, dude, yeah. you know who's coming up? And we, we, it dawned on us last night. I mean, Tuesday night as we're sitting there. These are the next few guys we got coming up for black belts. I'll give you the easy two first. You got Vic Gonzalez at probably the end of next year, maybe starting in twenty twenty five. Die in there. You got, you got, hey, <laughs> Nate Garza. Shout, okay. shout out to shout Nate. Out to Nate. Hey, listen yeah. to this one. We got Zach Reese coming up, dog. Uh, <laughs> we don't man. need everybody. We gonna have to invite some extra people out, yeah. and we all gonna don't get some. Me, we gonna get some. We gonna get some bats. We gonna we, we gonna get something you, to make it you, even. You just officially got the no yeah. thanks from Eric Garcia. Oh, so so yeah. So shout out to those guys. And uh, man, we did our end of the year promotions. Uh, Reggie and David, guys, have been with me for uh, I didn't realize it, man, but uh, ten years. Ten years for those guys. They got they, they got their brown belts the other night. And uh, a bunch of other uh, oh Devin, Devin and Aliman, I gave them some purples, 
Uh, so, you know, got guys were bumping up and moving on, man. But Badass. again, the first thing I got there, man, was, was Kyle. He stuck me. He's like, I fucking love Fury. And that's what we want to see. We're going to give you an extra stripe. Here you go, buddy. Yeah, I and almost, like, almost and, gave him a stripe and, myself. <laughs> and, and, just, and, and nothing against other promotions, man. It's just like we want to breed these guys here and give them the best experience that we possibly can. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, people. And, and it's cool when they appreciate that. I think other promoter, listen, other promoters, and I don't, I don't care who you are, other mm-hmm. promoters, your goal is to put on a show and make some money. That's what they're trying to do. And, that's that's and, what they're trying to do. And let's be honest. Like when I first started, that's that, what I thought it was about. A thousand percent. I'll be hundred. I'll, I'll be honest. That's what I thought it was about. And it was like the first couple of years. That's what I tried to do. Yeah. And now it's just like the tables have turned, and I'm in a p- position where it's like, man, put these guys in the UFC at all costs. Yeah. Even literally, if it cost me my damn. Literally at bank all account. Like, literally at, at all, all costs. Cost. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. That, that's you know we are not here to to. Do, do we want to sell a bunch of tickets? Of course. Of course we want nice. to sell tickets. And, nice. and, and We'd love to pack the house. Make, making money is cool, guys. It's, yeah, it it's is. okay it to is. make money. Like, we're, not, we're not opposed <laughs> to making money. But but it doesn't change what our goal is, man. And and already, like, we, we've got our boards. for. He's got a board. i got a board of my office for, for next year of who, who we think is going to contenders. Fucking amazing. Who, who we think is getting called up. Oh, I and, and as I sat back, I always used to, I used to have this fear. I had this fear of man, how are we going to replace them when, when these guys go? Man, Josh Van Lees, how, how are we going to replace Josh Van? And there's like well, two, three. Damn, now the 125 division's even bigger. And so as these guys leave, more people want to come fight for us. Our name has gotten bigger. And while I'm looking at 2024, all these people are like, we are realistically, we could lose 15 to 20 guys next we year. We will. Like, we who, and I say lose, I mean, go to the UFC. 2025. Dude, I'm already looking at guys who were already getting ready for 2025 who are going to be on board. Joe Hendershot, Tom, all these guys who are coming up, Kyle Toad Ray. They're going to be 2025 series. contender series guys. Yeah. And that is our goal, and that's what we're here to do. And that's honestly what separates us from everybody else. Everybody else is just putting on a show. We have a goal with our shows. I'm glad you enjoy the show. I'm glad you get to hear Wayne's beautiful voice and see all the awesome things that Diego and Jose do. But man, look, our goal is to get you out of our shows and to the big show. And I'm a, and I'm gonna fucking work for you. Like yes. Markel Maderos will tell you that I worked my ass off to. Uh, he, he's not the only one. There's a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah but Markel see, Maderos you know, yeah. knows firsthand that I was in Sean's inbox, probably annoying the shit out of oh, him yeah. about Markel. And when he finally matched Markel, and Markel performed the way he did on Contenders, it was fucking awesome to hear Sean say, "Like, man, that dude is a fucking stud. Good yeah. job." It's a it's a it's a fine line we have to walk sometimes when it comes to like reaching out to those guys. Oh, you're I like, bug the shit. I love Mick. I bug Mick a lot. And he's shit, my yeah. like he's my friend. But me and Shelby have a different relationship. Like I consider him a friend too, but I yeah. don't talk to him or see him as much as I see Mick. It's more of a professional friendship, right? Right. Uh, but he probably gets annoyed. I'm sure because I text him a lot and I tell him, "Hey man, you got to see this guy." Like I was on him about uh, Ay, and then Nate happened. No, then I like, turned the tables and I was yeah. on him about Nate. Yeah. <laughs> like, see, see guys, guys like Sean and Mick. Sean's awesome and, too, and, man. And, you I mean, know, any executive in the UFC, they hear it all the time. And I'll circle right. back to the discussion that we had, you know, back in our early days uh, in the Fight Pass deal where the executives oh. came out to that first Fight Pass show. And they're like, oh, my God. I didn't know you did it like this. this. How you do it. But yeah, yeah but but uh, you know, a couple months before, they were like, "Yeah, you know how many people say this?" Okay, yeah. so I mean, guys like Sean and Mick, they hear it all the time about, "Oh, this guy's really good," and right. you know, yeah. things don't always pan out. And and that's why it's very important. That but you you deliver, push, right? You, you deliver because Those you you a, a lot of these guys you build from the ground up. So by the time they're ready for a Mick or a Sean, you know what you're dealing with. You're confident in what you're selling, whereas some people are just you know you know whatever. But it starts in the amateurs. It starts exactly. in the amateurs. And if you get comfortable in Fury in the amateurs and you come up in the same venue that the pros are fighting on later and then you're in that early prelim pro spot and then you're you on don't, the main card. You don't get those jitters. Event. You don't get those jitters. You've been exposed to the bright lights. You've been exposed yeah. to the, the yeah. larger crowds or whatever. So, hey, Something so, to be said for that. Man, this weekend we, we were out in Vegas. How was that? I had the, uh, ate, it was, ate a little too much. Ate, hey, we ate a lot, dude. It's hard to count calories when you're eating out. Like, I use my fitness pal on the regular, daily now. Like, I track everything. <laughs> it's hard to count calories so you, when you have... I was going to say, who goes to Vegas to count calories 
unless you're going unless you're going to Cancun bed. for New Year's. You hey, know? It, when you have a bacon wrap burrito, you don't even want to count. Oh, no, you don't. You, you don't. Even want, you, you don't even want to count those hey. calories. Man, uh, but no tortilla. It's just a bacon oh, wrap. Yeah, literally yeah, a bacon no, wrap was, burrito. No, there was no, tortilla, the tortilla around. Yeah. It. Fuck the tortilla. Yeah, man. I yeah thought your keto. That, that would be awesome. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bacon wrap. Yeah, all the way around. some tacos on the side. Oh. Yeah. Especially if you're a keto guy and you're having a bacon wrap burrito. I mean, bacon. get the tortilla out of there. You know? Hey, we were having burritos with sides of tacos. Yeah, we had, a t- <laughs> we had, <laughs> we had tacos on the side. Uh, this this the same dude who like we go and we go and eat eat healthy ish. At uh, <laughs> we find this we find this Mediterranean joint. Ninety calories, baby. Look at that, and it's got um, is it too shot? Had these like big salads and stuff with, 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 with all the meat. Yeah, we eat this big ass like pound of salad. Oh, walk bro. out, and this dude's like, "Hey, we're going for I, dessert, I, baby. I, got, I got us twenty wings over the wings." Yeah, we walked out and got and got wings. The, man, the, uh, Eric the carnivore over here. Yeah, we we got I to hang all. we got to hang out with uh, Nikki Rod. Um, Such an awesome guy. It was it was it was bittersweet. We didn't we didn't have you guys there, and you know it would have been really cool to have everybody there that to have him on the, the show the for best. the experience. That been the icing. But I was he's so down to earth and nice kid, not very very nice guy, man. Um, and easily the easiest guy to work with all weekend out of all these. Like he was he's the second best grappler in the world. You know, like you you've got he's Gordon the first best grappler. In the you've world. got you've got Gordon Ryan and. Arguably, I mean, Argu- there's a case to be made for that, Eric. Until listen, until he he has that W, yeah, it just he's he's well, right there. He's probably one A and one B. Gordon's got to give him the opportunity to get it. I don't think if he's smart, he won't. Okay, so how do you? Then it, he's the best grappler it, in the world. Yeah, now, yeah so what, I mean, you can happen, make that argument that he's arguably the best. What grappler could in the happen world. right now, and I think we could see it. So Yuri Simonis was supposed to go against Gordon at the next ADC for the super fights, but he just lost to Nikki Rod. Well, if they put Nikki in there. Gordon's not going to do it. Why? I mean, Nikki uh, just got closer and closer every Nikki time. Nikki just him. made it. Uh, just called him yeah. out. Yeah. Put up his own 50K for to do it for 100K. Who wouldn't take a 10-minute match said no, for 100K? Right? He said no. Right? And he said, I'm not interested. Yeah. yeah. He says he's not going to let Nikki Rod get famous off of his name. Yeah. Well, if you smash him, Man. he won't. Yeah, you know. Now it's I but, don't I don't like no that. No offense to Gordon. I mean, also, I don't. Fucking, he's, I don't like. He's but great, also but to, to Gordon's credit, remember, if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. But he already did. I know he did. But now there's this <laughs> there's this young stud coming up who's arguably he the best. Well, and he's the saying, and he's saying no, no, no. Last year he ankle locked. He, he, he submitted him at ADCC right? ADC in under a minute. So right. it's it's not like he's Nikki yeah, Nikki's had enough. two chances in the last year. Yes. So yeah. I mean, as much as I and I'm on board, Nikki's putting yeah. up the money. I agree. I just think that Touché, if somebody's but if that's the fight him, to see, I mean, right? Yeah, who, who else is there? Him, then then go him. submit him again in under a minute. But if you know? but, but if if you're Gordon, if you're Gordon, yeah. you're already two and zero. Oh. Yeah, why, yeah, of, why, of course. And and, and, that, and that's a fair argument, right there. You wouldn't do it for the big money. Dude's making cash over like like. I don't know. There, I I don't disagree. Does he have an OnlyFans page? Who Nikki Rod? Gordon probably does. Gordon, Gordon, I'm sure he probably does. He probably does. Shout out to Howlerhead Whiskey. Shout out to Howlerhead Whiskey. Make Gord, sure you Gordon's on. making that uh, uh, Paige Van Zant money off of OnlyFans. So Shout he out to Howlerhead. He doesn't need to take the fight. She got she got a page. No, John. <laughs> Diego, you're the fucking number one biggest fan star member on that page. <laughs> you yeah, you're in, so you're, are you in the like Paige Van Zant? I thought you were in the little Asians. What do you what do you wait, wait, what are you into, Diego? In fairness, I brought up Paige <laughs> Van Zant. I'm sorry, Diego. <laughs> What you, what, you into, I, Diego? what you got, Diego? What you got, Diego? What's what's uh yeah. what's over there? What's over there? Shake, she's shaking the stick for you. Uh, it's over you there know. giving you the boner. <laughs> <laughs> what was it a couple weeks ago? I, I don't I don't remember, but you know, I it, got a boner. What was it that you said that? I don't remember. Uh, it was some, hey, how about, it was how about some this? grappling look, match? He, probably look, he was talking about how nasty that vodka was. No, no, it was, uh, it, was uh, nah. it, it, it was the that, Miles hey, Banks hey, uh, Robella's fight. Oh, Give yeah. him a bottle, probably. Shout out to Live Oak Vodka. Boom. Uh, but these boys are sucking down a bottle over here this morning. Yeah, we're almost out, man. We um, send, send more supplies. I got yeah, you. so we got it. so how about this? So my wife hadn't turned into a show in in months. Had just hadn't really hadn't listened. <laughs> The one show she turns good, into, good choice. Here from Diego is, I got a boner every few minutes <laughs> in the show. She's you know always crazy. He said it's from the Banks Robellis. <laughs> he got a boner from the two biggest black guys on the card. Come on, at man. At least, hey, it's at least, awesome. At least, <laughs> at awesome. least you didn't get a boner from the two biggest black yeah. guys on the card. <laughs> oh, That'd have been uncomfortable. The excitement of the fight. 
All right. Yeah, man, I got you. I got you. Fight boner. A a fight boner is a real thing. Hey, speaking of fight boners, guys, make sure you go to OnlyFans.com slash Fury Fighting for all your fight boners. Going to have some uh, cool stuff next year in 2024. Hey. This refill is brought to you by Live Oak Vodka, distilled and bottled in Texas, where we stand tall and our roots run deep. Woo! Uh So here's my uh, claim. If you need to see local fights, you got to. You got to. <laughs> I love it. Ah, uh, yeah. I love you it. You got to. Because Get your tickets at FuryFC.tv slash tickets, or Diego will get a boner yes. on you. Hey, uh, I want to... Uh, well, let me say... Ahead, man. You got this. You got this, Diego. Thing. Because I take pride in the fact that I've seen all these fights, these fighters sure. coming up and seeing them in the UFC and say, hey, man, I was there. I was yeah. there when they You filmed were, their intros. Yeah. Right? You were, so. you were there when the live feed went down when they were walking out. You were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you We've grown a lot, yeah, man. Like, you know, a, a lot of these younder fighters that, is this, is this that get man? intimidated oh, about, oh, this my shit. you know, oh, fighting man. on the big stage and fighting under the bright lights and all that. We, we forget, man, because this has been an evolution and it's happened over time. Like, man, you know, a few years back, it wasn't like that. You know, the Fury shows weren't the bright lights with the cameras and everything and the, the elaborate walkouts with the pyro and all this stuff. How man. crazy is that? Like, yeah. Just rewind 10 years. Exactly. Like, rewind, you know, when, whenever rewind you hear guys are like intimidated to fight on a Fury show, it's like, why? 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 But then right. you think about it, like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's changed somewhat. I, I so remember, I get it. I remember when we had the cage, you were lining it up under the, the venue lights. Under the chandelier? There was, there. Like, there was like three <laughs> lights yes. up there in Humble. <laughs> At the Civic Center. Until somebody turned on the switch, and then you get all the lights. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then somebody would lean against the wall. God the, damn, pal. And all the lights, and Diego would be Oh, that's happening. Remember when we, we'd internet. have to stop fights? Because, because the lights went off? Yes. Yeah. And we'd have to make it, please stop hitting the lights, guys. And, and we weren't on TV, so hey, don't be an asshole. Stay off the oh, light yeah. switch. <laughs> yeah, Wayne, Wayne used to roast people, man. Like, Golly. People don't understand, In the man, middle like, of a fight, you're like on a light switch? Come on, man. Like This shit's been earned, not given. And that's true, right there. It has been earned. I didn't mean to that. All of us, like it's, it, it's, dude, it's been earned. It's it's crazy as as we sit here, man. Again, we're heading into year four For, with fight pass. Yeah, time with, flies with when you're pass. having fun, man. And I and I think like you, when you look at the evolution of of Fury, yeah, man, 2010, 11, 12, 13, like 14, 15, There was a lot of work to build this foundation because you had to be we had to be ready. To go to Fight Pass. It, was, it wasn't like Fight Pass came and said, hey, Still let me ready. fix what you have. No. They came in and said, wow, you have an amazing product. We want it. Right. So, so we, you know, man, pat yourself on, on the back for, for what you did to get up to here. You know, and, and I, I think there's a lot of promotions who see what we're doing and they wish it was them, but they didn't put in the work to get to where we are they now. They think... That there. Overnight yeah. success. What, man? It's not good. Yeah, I right. mean, <laughs> yeah, right. Listen, in, in 10 order, years to be an overnight success. In order, in order to really appreciate it, you got to go through struggle, man. Oh, like, yeah. you have to. Fuck yeah. There's no, there's no way. There's no good without bad. And there's no appreciation without struggle. There's like no yin I, without I, yang. I, I, I remember at the end of the show, we were talking. There's no rub without like, tug. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look. There was a lot of those damn shows. <laughs> Dude, hey, even <laughs> look, even oh, even fuck. since fuck, I even, promise I get this. Even time. since since we, we've been on Fight Pass, we've had we've had some of those shows yeah. because yeah, we've man. learned and we're still learning every show. I can tell you now, every show. I don't think there's been a show yet where the where Eric and I haven't got home. It's midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and we're texting each other because we're watching the show back already. Dude, I go home. That's the first thing I do. I put Fight Pass on. I put my headphones yeah. on. Really? And yeah. I watch the whole fucking show. I want it. I want it. I want it fresh in my mind because, for me, remember mm. most of my night is spent behind a camera. Yeah. So behind oh, a yeah. camera and on headphones running. So my perception of what the fights look like are completely different yeah. to almost anybody else's. For live, what, what, you you have to go back and watch it to like yeah. actually analyze the, viewers, the show. Yeah. That's, right. that's that's what I want to see. And and a lot of the times, and I can say now, Diego, prop, props to you, man. Like when we when we first started, the list was long of like, man, why the fuck did we do this? What was this? Now what was this? Like three things. Now it's things. now it's honestly, and us. it's the same three things every time. <laughs> honestly, it's us. <laughs> same three things from twenty thirteen. It's us just being being so so picky and wanting perfection. 
that things that like you already know, and look, man, mistakes happen. We how many mistakes have we seen the UFC make? Like we see yeah. that. I we saw see some that. at the yeah. invitation. We see it yeah, all the time, and it's man. always stuff that like your yeah, you your average no fan is not going to see. But Diego. I get huh? it. You didn't yeah. see no mistakes, but it's it's not going to change. I did. <laughs> like we cannot let our foot off the pedal at this point. No, no. Like if if anything, we got to push it through the floor yes. even 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 harder. Yes, you know and and. With some of, I mean, I can't wait to announce some of our stuff for 2024. Like, it's going to be awesome. We got some really big things coming up. I would like um, to. Know. We're yeah. not leaving Fight Pass. No, I'll tell you that we ain't going nowhere. Ain't leaving Fight Pass. We're going to do some cool stuff with Fight Pass. Um, the Invitational is going to grow. Shout out more to as Tetchy, well. man. I mean, yeah, he made me feel good when he got up there and he did his little speech. That was cool, man. Like, I didn't really expect him. To I mean, he could he could have said my name too, but you know, it's all right. He just he was <laughs> they like, had, they had like the fighter meeting and the rules meeting. Yeah. I haven't had enough live oak to chime in. Go ahead. And, and, Go he ahead. Got, and he got up in there and he was like, "Hey, real quick, for those of y'all who don't know, you know, these guys run Submission Hunter Pro and Fury FC." They're going to be with us for many, many years. Wow. Yeah. It's and badass. He told him, he said, yeah, Dude, go compete a, for them. Yeah, go compete over there. You know, we look at that to build this. It was fucking awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he has, he's, he's, he's done a lot with just the FBI to improve, man, from, yeah, from he here has. to there. That was a great show. That was a great I know, show. I know, I um, know. there's some, there's some limitations and people, uh, people weren't super receptive of the rule set this weekend. Well, um, the, the non jujitsu competitor doesn't is not going to understand as easy as somebody who does jujitsu. But I think that's what they're trying to do. Like they're, they're, they're trying to make it more accessible for the MMA fan, and I don't know if that came across with like the negatives. But it will. It's it a, will. It was so what, so what were the negatives? What, what were the, the the rule set for stalling? Issue stalling. Yeah. More, so they were tr- for stalling. So that referee was pretty freaking. Uh, the referee was great, but what you have to remember with with that rule set. So the, it's a hybrid ADCC rule set, and with that rule set. Um, he doesn't do a lot. The calls come from the judges. Really? Stalling. All the, the, all he's basically going is repeating what the judges say. So modified ADCC, so uh, Submission Hunter Pro rules. A version, a version of it. You know, <laughs> I t- Dude, I tried to say that. Like, when I first started this shit, it was submission only. Yeah. That's it. And then for the title fights, it was overtime for points. Right. Yeah. So the only thing that they did differently was they really pushed – the pace of the action, and if there was no push, you would get a negative. You're not engaging. You're not improving your position. Mm-hmm. Minus yeah. warning. Minus whatever. That's really my the favorite. Only got to improve your position. My Shout favorite. out Mike Alexander. My favorite. Hey, hey pick up. Make, make sure you go pick up Mike's book. It's yes, available. Please. It's available on Amazon. Y'all want to bring Black Belt Mike to the podcast? Let's bring him in. Let's yes. Bring Let's bring him in. Let me text him. Hit him up right now. Um, the hell was I talking about before we got to the book? <laughs> We're talking about like the stalling, you oh, got to improve yeah. position, so, slow so action. One of the funny things that I read, so, was people were complaining about the rule set and the stalling. And, and this is, the, I, I read places where they were saying they're using inexperienced people. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> hey, listen, to, to, to break the fourth wall here. For got a four, couple of white belts running this shit. <laughs> the people who, who you love running the ADCCs, those judges and refs, were the same assholes sitting at the table with us. Woo. Really? It was ADCC refs and judges, the most experienced of their group. Right. They helped along with, with Techie putting together this rule set. And like anything, nothing is perfect. And what we are working for is to make a, a grappling brand that is long lasting, but that also has the ability to bring in more fans. You're trying to appeal to a bigger audience. Yes. Jiu-Jitsu is a very niche product. Yes, man. If you only appeal to like the hardcore diehard jujitsu people, you're not going to grow that audience. You, you, you have to make it more exciting. You have to make yeah. it more engageable for you know your average viewer. So it has universal appeal. I thought I thought we were a little heavy handed on on the on the negatives, but I loved the pace. I love everybody. Dude, they worked. Everyone was working their asses off. Even Felipe Pena was trying to escape we had a off conversa- the side of them. We had a conversation about um, like doing some stuff with the pay though, right? Yeah. We, we did yeah. behind the scenes. I, like if you start, let's just say your sub bonus is going to be $2,000. $2,000 if you win by submission. Now, if you don't win in the first two minutes by submission, we're going to take $1,000 or $500. 500 bucks. If you get hit with a stall, we're going to take 500 bucks off. So, and I wanted, I thought it would be cool. What if you're right. watching? They're going to push for that. If you're watching yeah, at home. It make it, it you, you incentivize them to not stall. You incentivize 100%. them to get the submission. So what if you're watching at home and you see a countdown timer that's your bonus timer? 
and then you yep. see Boom. it clicking down. Damn. Damn. Yes. Remember, remember back in the day, 90 minute time limits? And yes. You see, you see the clock ticking out? Yes. And as it gets lower and lower, you're like, oh shit, is he going to do <laughs> yep. it or not? Yep. It, so, it, it you create that, that edge, anticipation. Man. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, it gets, and it gets your viewer emotionally off, invested in the match. Five hundred bucks, five or even two hundred and fifty dollars off. Two hundred fifty dollars off. Sounds like Squid Games off. to me, <laughs> bro. Hey, like I, I think you know. Listen, I think the, the rule set. You, you got to start kayfabe the the pay scale. <laughs> the application cool. of the rule set is only going to get better. Um, we're we're doing a great job, and I think that that the combination of of Eric and Techie and and the guys uh, who are helping us out from ADCC. Are I think they're going to be able to really put together an amazing product that's going to be long lasting and can rival ADCC. Element OP, nah, right. bitch. Uh, cool. I, I think that uh, Five Pass Invitational should be the one that does that. I think they it have the ability to do it. They have the budget. They yeah. got the right people behind the platform. And when you put the UFC name on anything. That is the greatest. I was I was just about to kind of segue to that. that that's yes. probably Techie's original vision. Is hey, why doesn't the UFC have this premier top level jujitsu? Hey, he's done a great brand. job. Yeah, like, Techie's done a great job pushing yeah. it, and I, it's only going to get better. And, and and you know the initial concept, you know promotion versus promotion, and, and it's evolved to what it is now. I mean, you, you can see that effort. And you get Hunter and Dana involved in it, and you get them in the Fight Pass office, and they start saying, "Hey, we're going to back this jujitsu thing." Everybody better run away. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, this I think thing we'll take over 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 the next two years. How'd Big Dan do out there? He didn't go his way this time. Didn't go his way this time. He didn't mother's milk a uh, 150 no, pound guy. Uh, he right? had Victor Hugo, and I want to say it was an Americano. It, it was something like that. I, I couldn't really yeah. tell from where I was sitting. Um, but that's one of the first times that you've seen Big Dan lose. Like he, he just doesn't lose. And people, you got to remember, even though he's this hulking monster, he's he's only a few years in. He's a purple belt. Yeah, I was going to say he's met, purple, right? Yeah. yeah, I've never met Victor Hugo in person, and it was cool because when I seen him, he was like, "Hey, your uh, Travis took black belt." Hey, but he's a six hey. blades black belt yeah. too, so under Sanji and oh that, yeah, so yeah, 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 they're an affiliate. Yeah, that's cool, man. We uh, it's like yeah, I'd be up there. I just don't feel like it right now. Hey, shout out, <laughs> shout out to, uh, shout out to our man, C Christian Guzman went out there and I uh, worked hard and he didn't get the W like he yeah, wanted I was gonna this say, time. I saw him and in, in, in his stories, he was out there. Came yeah. out, came out on Friday night, played a little blackjack with he did. us. He did. He did. His boy was, was, was rolling hard out there. Did, did he at least win at the blackjack table? No. No, he didn't. Damn. No one. No I went one. and ra uh, won a couple on roulette, though. Yeah, he did. I like roulette. Put that roulette. shit, yeah, shit on red, baby. Oh, damn. You didn't bet on black? Nope. He, 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 he went on Alex red. Alex Black weekend. would be really disappointed in you right now, man. Well, if had I bet on black, I would have lost. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Actually, what? <laughs> he, actually, he actually won. He actually won. I won, I won three bucks, bitches. So. Uh, I, I gave it to him. To Whoa, three he actually won twenty two, and he gave three it to bucks. Me. <laughs> three bucks won't even get you a, a double uh, take from a hooker man, in he Vegas, won man. Twenty two when I lost everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I gave it to and him. He gave it to me, and then I went and turned it into two hundred. Wow, <laughs> damn! And then nothing for that, right? Just oh, well, we, hey. we, we had dinner. And then we went. We took the boys. You had bacon wrap burritos. We took the boys to dinner. Two bacon wrap burritos in Vegas probably cost two hundred bucks. Shout out to Al Three, man. How much? That did he enjoy uh, what he was eating? Listen, here's where we lay out, Diego. Hey, Here, here's where we lay out. No, no, listen, you no, guys, listen, guys, you guys understand this. this. So, you guys understand this. So, have you ever been around somebody who's like their energy and their vibe is just so fucking amazing that you just want to be around them? You just, you just want to hang out with them, DJ AL. And this dude, AL3. like, like. He is he's an OG, Albert Lenesis. Yes, the third. the third. He's been a DJ for I don't know how long. But he's been the UFC's DJ for like fifteen years, sixteen yeah. years, like long time. And and Ooh, you'll get. I to, would love to get. Him on a podcast. Listen, you would get, you'll get to hear his story one day. Yeah. Of how he got that gig, bro. It's fucking amazing. And and so hey, we're sitting there, man. My man's having some good vibes. We're feeling good. He got that bacon wrap burrito, and it and came he wanted out. a side of French fries. He wanted a side of he, he, for everybody. Yeah. For, that's just he was like Damn. a side of fries for everybody. Damn. Right, my man sits. That's down. a lot of carbs, Eric. <laughs> Hey, I don't uh, need any fries. Hey, shout out. I shout believe out. We had uh, Jacob Parga uh, from Iridium. And, hey, and shout out Jacob. Jose Aldo's mitt coach. I didn't know. Yeah. I was like, okay. That's pretty Why awesome. Why not? Yeah. So we're sitting down, and hey, you look up, and all you see is OG's got his eyes closed. He got that breathe. I'm about to smile. And he's, he's just vibing. And just he, vibing and to it. And he eats the whole thing with his eyes closed. And me and Eric just go. 
man. My man. I mean, it was awesome. It was so awesome to, to see it's that. Like, it's like he's playing like soul music on a saxophone or something. Dude, that's the exactly food. what it was yeah. like. It was some Kenny. He, he was just enjoying right it. Like, Dude, here, imagine, here's the vibe. Like, as good as he is with the music, yeah. I guarantee you, like, he hears all that shit in his head before he goes out there. And he's oh, like, yeah. Okay. Hey, y'all have got to listen. If, if you haven't already, go to his Spotify. SoundCloud. Uh, SoundCloud. I'm sorry. His, his SoundCloud account. His SoundCloud DJ Al MF3. Best, DJ Al dude, MF3 he puts on the Spotify. Best mixes out there. On SoundCloud. Yeah. He'll toss every Sound- now God and then. Goddamn, see? I don't know. See. Every now and then he'll he'll send us like I get, I'll get a text or an email. I'm like, what's this? I click it. It's just some badass shit. He gave me a little thumb drive of every mix he's ever done. Mm. But if you he go, he gave to, it to you. Yeah. If you free. Go to, if you go. Yeah, wow. Free. If you go to SoundCloud and you look at some, you you'll appreciate those mixes. Yeah, I'm sure I would. Like you, '90s R&B, '90s hip hop. I, I know the one that yeah. we grew up with. I, I know the one that we play. You know, sometimes out of fury, I really appreciate. It's got the Ghetto Boys on there, yeah. and you know, a lot of you'll find all that stuff. Yeah. Hey, make sure you, y'all can go find him on Instagram as well. DJ A L M F three. Look, hey, this first picture up there is your boy. Look at that. Yeah, look at, look at that. Your boy right there. Look yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Diego, hey, I saw that. I was like, look at these assholes out there having a good time without us, Diego. Your boy, your boy Al, man. Shout out to him, man. Such a su- such an amazing guy. Rich has the the prison smile for every picture. I do. I, hey, that's just. Uh, hey, you remember Andy, uh, Andrew Prison Sex Craig? Andrew Prison Sex Craig. That was his original nickname. <laughs> that see, okay. My deal with nicknames, man. Yeah. Like if if somebody gives me a nickname, it's so like cool. okay. If your nickname is like the serial <laughs> rapist, I'm not saying that hey, shit. Right. We went to Conroe, Texas. I would not say that. I would not say that. (laughs) I was on the smoker. I think Andrew was on the smoker and a couple other guys from uh, the gym that we were training at with Lewis Woods. Yeah. We go out there and do this smoker. Andrew's opponent falls out and they give him like some guy that's a little bit smaller that we've trained with before. And Andrew goes out and smokes him. And then afterwards they post all the videos on, on YouTube. And then Andrew calls us and he's like, dude, what the fuck? I was like, what? He's like, whoever uploaded my name put Andrew Prison Sex Craig in my, <laughs> my parents are over here ripping the fuck out. I'm asking what's going on. Hey, so his first not his first pro fight. So I caught his first pro fight was the same night as Colin Wright. We were Louisiana. in Louisiana. USA MMA? Yep. I was there. Yeah. I, I was, was there. there Good old Colin I just, Wright. His hair just walked right on by me. I just didn't so recognize was, him because he had hair. Probably so. He had hair on his head. So I was he had hair on the I side was, of his head. I was cornering Colin Wright the, uh, that night. And we get out there, and I walk in into into the locker room. Is that way you should comb your hair like that. Yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> Listen, the Donald Trump in, come over. I walked in, and Andrew had those uh, you those had the Apollo, Apollo Creed. Creed. Yeah, the Apollo Creed shorts. Oh, Creed. that's dope, and man. And I walk in, he's doing his thing, and Travis looks out. I go give everybody a hug, man. And this he dude, fought dude, Antoine Williams. Yeah, I beat the shit. I remember out Remember that night? Beat the shit out of him man, that bro. night, man. That was also the same night. That Jonathan Ivy, Jonathan Ivy fought Ken Shamrock. Yes, and on that card, and he yep. was doing all the rolling around on the yep. ground, trying to get the heel hooks and shit. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a cool night, man. Andrew That's Craig's crazy. been around a long time, man. Yeah, that Andrew was his pro prison debut, right? sex Craig. Prison se- that was his, that was his pro <laughs> debut. Next time you see him, I had no idea sex. that that was ever like a nickname for oh, him. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's got the porn stash for it now, so we can yeah, kind of roast him a little bit. Next time I see him in the cage, I'll I'll be sure to. Mentioned that to him. Yeah, he's hilarious, man. Next time he goes, we need to have him on the podcast too, What's man. With that? Oh, dude, I've tried to get him and Jace together. He's hey. out. Of, he's out in Austin now, I'm so I mean, cool I, I get it. Yeah, him and Jace awesome. here at the same time. I had him on on one of our original Two radio shows <laughs> with me and Raheel. I want to say it was like 2014. 15. Raheel Ramzanali or Raheel Ramzanali. Ramzanali. Andrew sits in and just just like he's just such a laid back kid. He sits down. He takes his gum out of his mouth and puts it on his jeans. And does the whole the whole thing, and then picks his gum up, puts it back in his He's mouth. He's done. I'm like, you couldn't get another piece, dog. Dude, oh, man, <laughs> hey, hey, when you only have one piece, yeah, you, you, you got to hang on to it. I've got a picture of that floating around somewhere. And just the other Dude. day, I had that. It was a white and red walkout shirt that he had that night for his pro debut, and he had given me one. And I remember. Um, I ended up just recently going through like a big bag of like all these walkout shirts I've had over these and just kind of got rid of them. Because uh, what do you do with all that shit? Like, am I supposed to do, make a blanket or some shit? Yeah, uh, you, you <laughs> could. I mean, yeah, no. you ungrateful bastard. No, man. I had so <laughs> many cool shirts in there. Like, make some stuffed animals, some pillows. I mean, you could do all kinds of things with those. Jeez, just a prison sex pillow? For your jujitsu jitsu porn room. a real thing. What, prison, prison sex? Prison sex pillow. Oh, I thought prison sex. <laughs> 
Either way it goes, prison sex is not 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 something you want on you. Nah. Ever. Right, Diego. You been in there? I don't think, man. Diego, what's it like in the clink? Hey, Diego, you ever held a pocket? <laughs> you, ever, you ever held a pocket, Diego? You ever held a pocket? No. You ever held a pocket? No. <laughs> hey, you, you, ever, you ever had to go open mouth open mouth for, for some commodities over there on the side? <laughs> Look up at daddy. Look up at daddy. <laughs> oh, don't don't share this. I would I would prefer if this isn't the clip we sent to, to TJ or Coin. No, hey, no, I don't think they want to hear. Yeah, we just got a text from TJ. I saw it. Did you read it? Do yeah. it. Yeah. I love TJ. Just Let's do it. T- bring it. We're bringing on a, a fourth commentary we, this year. We got. We got. We got. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, we're bringing on a fourth, or yeah. we're losing one and bringing on the third. Who are we losing? I don't, I don't think we're going to lose anybody. I think we're going to bring on a fourth. Yeah. So what? T- TJ wants to be part of it, man, and yeah. I think TJ DeSantis is pretty awesome. We how how do you not bring on TJ DeSantis? I mean, those, this, well, we're going to have fucking good, man. We're just going to have to. Well, talk well, to I the mean, guys of course, everybody out. knows yeah. that. We'll talk off the air. Things yeah. that I'm going yeah, through right we'll now. I haven't out, had we'll, that much halibut. We'll figure out where to or where to weave them in and out. Uh, Christian Guzman sent me up. What do we want? Uh, He'll be a good addition, though. See, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb when we do these podcasts. It's hard, man. Man, yeah. you know how hard you it you, you guys you only have to block off like an hour or so. <laughs> in that in that hour time, I feel like I'm missing so much stuff. Oh, that I need to be hey, me business? too. It's not MMA or or how dare whatever. You but talk but about your regular. Job. I'm just saying. You know. Listen, you, you if you're trying to make a match, you don't respond. They're like, all right, let me go hit up this other promotion. All right, we got go, go ahead. We got a match for you. Go ahead. That's, are they are they going to put you on Fight Pass? Are the they going to get you to the UFC? I mean, go that go ahead, go the, to another. If, if they the can't response. wait an hour for you to do the podcast and then well, like, they don't know I'm doing the podcast. They don't I'm, oh, set a fucking auto they response. Think I'm I don't know. A but dude, but, it, but if that if that's the mindset, like oh, Eric Garcia and Rich Burmaster didn't respond to me within the hour, they, I'm going to go fight at X Y Z. Okay, depends. go ahead. It depends who's who's my, yeah. They well, might think we're. It I'm doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> they might think we're drinking Haller and eating Fogo de Chao. Usually, oh no, not not right now. But Fogo, yeah, we haven't usually. been to Fogo de Chao. That's all we do is we. Sit Eric has not taken us to Fogo de Chao. Y'all, no. you what? Y'all haven't? No. <laughs> Eric has not taken us to Fogo no. de Chao. Well, when we were fuck you guys. When you when we were y'all are on, not on keto. Hey, listen, fuck you. We were on our keto yeah, diet. I we, totally would be to go to Fogo. When I do. We Whenever when, I go to a steakhouse, I am totally on a keto diet. Ask Anita. Hey, ask Anita. They're like, would you, would you would you like some more sides? Nice. No. Don't Seriously. give me any mashed potatoes. Okay. Don't give me any of that shoot? bullshit. Just bring the meat. Listen, I want to I want to apologize because I thought. You guys heard me when we were on the plane to Vegas last week. I said, we're going to Fogo. And I'm pretty sure I heard you guys go, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, did you guys didn't hear me? They said, fuck Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 had, they had a couple of shots of howler at that point. I'm actually flying point. back to Vegas today at 620. Are you really? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's going on in Vegas at 620? My anniversary. Ooh, how, how many Ooh, years Ooh, Tara wants to go to the Fight Pass Invitational or you the Apex? Saturday. <laughs> How, how, how many years is this? Uh, 13. Lucky, Thir- listen, lucky number 13. 13 married. 23 together. 23. Lucky number 23. What a lucky girl. I know, man. <laughs> Tara, congratulations, Tara. Diego, none of these cameras are lit up. Where am I looking? Hey, God damn, pal. What congrats, a lucky girl. Congrats, congratulations, Tara. Tara Garcia. Oh, man, I'm the luckiest. You're one world, lucky man. girl. <laughs> Hey, for her to put up with all this shit she does, with me traveling, with me screaming on the phone and worrying about hey, this fight, lost this hey, fight, she, this she pussy, is this lucky guy. you provide her with an opportunity to sell tickets, man. <laughs> Congratulations, Tara Garcia. Looks like trying to ruin your anniversary before you even get there. Hey, don't release this till after they get back. <laughs> I'm uh, shooting for the first ever edit. We're gonna cut some shit out. Hey, so we got we got Christmas break coming up. Man, we got a little break. We have got almost a month off. Uh, between between shows, no, we're, we're in the midst of it right now, working. man. Hey, listen, I don't, know, I don't build, know what to do with my weekends. We're man. building. We're building March tenth right now. Badass. Everything between now and March tenth is done. Uh, yeah. Done. What, what about March twenty second? He booked a show on my fucking birthday, man. It, congratulations. Oh, we gonna party. In Happy San birthday. birthday! I know. Baby. Yeah, we are. Okay, we so are. That, that's the show. That you're coming out on Friday it, night. It's San Antonio, right? Friday yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Anita, uh, Anita already told me, like, hey, I'm going with you. Just tell Eric I'm coming with she you for that either. show. That's fine. So yeah, yeah. coming Friday night, so Diego's so, okay. not going to have a Great. Roommate. I'm going to be hung the fuck over for 
<laughs> is it at least a Cowboys? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta I'm going to need hair Wayne. of the dog. We're actually booked for Techport. Okay. You got to you're gonna hear Wayne come out. Is the next fucking fight? I don't like, know, guys. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Listen, if there's one thing this dude can do, he'll pull his shit together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, I, hey, Rich Burmaster knows. He's he's seen me in Denver. Yeah, pull yeah. it together. Yeah, he'll pull it together. <laughs> hey, man. we've had we've had some time. No in, doubt. Woo! Hey, hey shout, shout out. Denver, Colorado. Denver, Denver, Colorado. To New Orleans, Louisiana. And the best. And every point in between. The New best Orleans, brewery yeah. out there, Odyssey Brewing. Odyssey Beer um, Works, baby. I don't know how long we, we were there Man. and we stayed there. But I know that <laughs> when the next thing I knew, it was like, time to go to the venue. And I'm like, oh, shit. Man. Okay. Hey, hey, Rich, Rich like, tapped out before I did. And, you know, I don't really remember that. I'll, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to. I haven't had enough. I don't know. I don't know that's. I don't you, know who could drink who under the table. No, no, I, Rich could definitely drink me under the table. But there are a couple of trips to Denver, and they're kind of running together right now. That's why I'm, I'm yeah. laying out. Listen, there's but man, only, hey, dude, that, that night, the old fashions. Oh do my god, too. that so was a fucking two, night, two, man. Drink under the table. Me and Mick versus you and you and, you and Wayne. I'll, you let Mick hey, who he wants on his team. Hey, whoa. Okay. Listen, let's, listen, let's do it. I'll take it as a challenge, man. Listen, I'll, say, I'll take Eric Garcia on listen, my team. I've heard about you trying to get in Ubers. So let's not. I will sneak <laughs> out of the Uber and get back to the bar to win. I think That's I, some Ric Flair shit right Woo! there. I think out of everybody, Diego's the first to get drunk. I've spent more oh, yeah. money on jumped Ubers <laughs> than you made in a year. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mick is one of the few guys, like, I, I can drink. I'm not a small dude. I can put him back. I can drink. Mick is one of the few guys, so I'm like, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to go 24 hours of shots with Mick, because he will. Exactly. Mick will just, surprise you. Gotta space him. Yeah, you got to space him out. You do like one every 10 Mick, minutes. Mick, yeah. Mick doesn't <laughs> space him, though. He'll do one every 10 minutes. Is, is Mick bulimic? He starts, like, does he, like, he go starts purge asking, alcohol? He starts asking for half shots. Got a half shot? Got a half shot? <laughs> Got a half shot? Hey, whenever I'm, whenever I'm drinking with Mick, I ask the bartender for like a water shot. Hey, can you make my Patron look like a water? You hear that, Mick? <laughs> you done gave himself uh, away. Man, Mick just, Maynard does not listen to this podcast, just, sir. Every every week he downloads He's it. got better things to do with his time. He downloads this every week for his first flight to Vegas. <laughs> no, I know he does. Shout out, Mick Maynard. Let's shoot some Patron. Diego, what you, what you what you what you hoping for for Christmas this year, baby? Sleep. <laughs> That was what a, day are we doing the podcast next week? That was a, a riveting, riveting answer from Diego Reyes. Man, you could have gone all oh, kinds oh. of directions with that. What day, dude? I'm, what, Tuesday, what Thursday. Day? Those, those seem to be the days that I work gotta get, best I gotta for get for y'all fellas. Some of you assholes. Mouth. Tuesday or Thursday? Last, bulldog, bulldog, no, and bulldog. No, that last game, <laughs> yeah, the we, last we all get bulldog puppies. Last hey, game. hey, did, did Callie just have a litter? What the fuck just happened here? Callie had a litter. <laughs> oh goddamn, we're all getting we're all we're all getting puppies. I get a puppy. I love I love dogs. You want an English bulldog? Man, listen, I'm gonna tell you. I got a golden retriever. Man, look, you think you like lint brush everything, and then you like get in the truck, and there's like you know. God damn, there's like dog hair that I didn't even see walking through the house to get to the yeah, truck, man. Yeah. So I've Anyways. got, you know, at home, I've got this beautiful lab. Like, she's beautiful. Came from this awesome hunting preserve where they train them up and all this stuff. Beautiful dog. But there is nothing like owning a bulldog. I I, I cannot tell really? you. Man, they have oh, so bro. much, like, personality. And I've learned in my house now that I'm no longer my wife's favorite. It is clearly the bulldog. The bulldog is her number one go to. Really, I come behind the bulldog and probably one of the cats, maybe. I'm, I'm assuming, but like, dude, they have so much personality. They're so fun. I never really like. I never. I always kind of wanted a bulldog. I was like, ah, they're awesome dogs. They look cool. And then you get one, and you're like, holy shit, these things are amazing. I mean, you could be having the worst day, man, and you come home and you see that bulldog, and you're like, yeah, fuck it, it's real. You just, hey, you just pick fuck up that it. bulldog. Yeah, that's the Marine Corps dog, right? Yeah, you you pick that's up your little house hippo. They, they don't grow up and leave you like children do. Nah, I mean they die eventually. Okay, what's God damn? That yeah, took a really yeah. stark turn. Listen, man, I had a oh, yeah. I had Tyson. You just broke Rich's heart. Tyson yeah. was my favorite, like beautiful male bulldog, fat, great, big head, everything. Yeah. Thirteen years, man, I lost them. Man, it's thirteen sucks. years. Thirteen is a long years is a pretty good run. It sucks to lose an animal. I yeah. thirteen years. My dog's already gonna be six. I had a boxer of twelve. My uh, my my chocolate lab. The only dog I had before this, before these two, uh, she was fourteen. I think she 14. had. She was fourteen years old. Because wow. I remember, like, my daughter's thirteen. I had her for a year before before. No, I had her for a few years before she got here. But I got pictures of Grayson as a little baby, like using the puppy as a pillow, like like using the dog. She's probably like three years old, mm. using her as a pillow. Man, like, animals are so awesome. Dogs are amazing. What's cool is that if if Callie lives another six seven years. 
Madison will be 25 years old. Oh, dude. When she finally goes, you know. Oh. She'll be like, man, I've had this dog since I was 12. All these kids. She's going to be really man. sad. Yeah. I hope you have a backup plan, man. Like th- th- Just this, this story. Replace it in the middle of the night. Get another one. <laughs> get another one. <laughs> this did not have a happy. Rich, no, you were man, going no. somewhere happy with this. I was. And Eric Garcia just hijacked <laughs> this and dogs die. But listen, and on the plus side, <laughs> God damn. getting a bulldog puppy. It's amazing. They're the cutest things you can get. So, like, she'll be, you'll go right back to, oh, look at this badass. Yeah. Jago, you, you, you got a puppy? I got, no, no puppies. What I got, you got dogs. No, yeah. not, not your ladies. Like, what do you, what do you, <laughs> what do you call <laughs> your bitches? What do you call your what bitches, call your bitches uh, that, that aren't, like, you know, what do you call your house bitches? Masseuses. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what, what kind of dog you got, Jago? The Asian cocker spaniel. I got a terrier, and then I got I know a, you mix, got a, I know like you got a, a cockadoo. Slash retriever. Hey, how many dogs you got? Just two. Cockadoo? 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 Wayne, you got a dog? No, yeah, yeah. We got a golden retriever. Solid. She's uh, like nine months old now. Oh, nice. Eight, nine months? Yeah. Dude. I have never seen like a more loving dog than a golden retriever. Dude, go. Those in labs are like the sweetest yeah. things in oh the world. Oh my god, man! Like, yeah. like this, to, to your guys' point, it's like you know you're having a bad day or whatever, and this dog just like <laughs> comes up and lays her head on your lap. Like, will you will you just fucking love me? Quit worrying about whatever yeah. whatever it is you're doing. Just just pet me. And I'm like, okay, all right. So so my bulldog's name's Bell, and and Sadie for, last, for me. Sadie's my girl. And and for the, like the last six months, I don't know what what her deal is, but like I walk into the house. And she's not the dog who's gonna come up and like like her. Dude, she launches herself at me. She like runs yeah. up in both feet, get out! <laughs> Hits me in my legs. I'm like, oh my oh, god! All yeah. right, like just a little bowling ball coming at me. But my lab is just sitting back, like, will you come pet me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, whenever I get home, dude, Sadie will like jump up and like punch me in my balls with her big ass paws every time, like like jumping on me, like pet me, pet, pet me. It's like, do you just rack me? Give me a minute. Hey, very, very loving dogs. Hey, before we get out of here, uh, again, I want to I want to use a big congratulations out to all the fighters who won the end of the year awards. Um, I'm slowly going to be over the next week posting the videos for those. We've announced some of them. And uh, one note I'd like to mention for I have gotten so many messages of people saying, well, X should have won or this person should have won. Or this, hey, you know what? Did Chapman you, messaged me this morning. Man, yep. I should have got knocked out. Of did this. you? Whoa, vote? All right. Look, hey, man. Did hey. You vote? These exactly, Rich. You gave everybody like a month of vote. We could have held it open longer yeah. and gave you two months, but a, a month is ample time for you to rally your supporters, get everybody to yeah, vote for man. you. We, we we talked about it on the podcast, man. Look, awards, especially like year end blank of the year, fill in the blank of the year. Those awards are so subjective, and we've yeah. had so many moments like fight of the year, 100%. knockout of the year. How do you pick one? Yes. Terrence Chapman could have gotten knocked out of the Great year. Knockout. I mean, yeah. goddamn, we gave like Olivia Beerley got amateur fighter of the year. Of course, yeah. Damien Aronde could, could have got, got that award. As well. Joe yeah. Hendershot could have got that award. You have ample time to vote. You have ample time to get your supporters to rally around you. Man, we don't pick them. Nope. Y'all do. So I mean, and I guess they don't think that we. And they think we pick them. Yeah, no. it's, it's not. It's not like our favorite people. I mean, yes, we we you know appreciate. Case, it'd be all strong style. So it would. It would. <laughs> It would. Yeah, right. It would. Devin getting submission. Across of the year. Hey, Devin getting submitted yeah. by, by Joe Hendershot. Devin Jones getting <laughs> submitted by Joe Hendershot. Submission of the so, year. And we give we give Devin the trophy. Honestly, I'd have gave it to Laz Garcia. I'd have been like, that's yeah, sweet ass. Right? But listen. Exactly, man. So so what I what I did, you know, so everyone kind of knows, I asked all of our Fury staff, send me, send me your, you know, here here are the parameters. Here's what I'm looking for. Send everybody. me your answers. I took everybody. Hey, who did, who does Sierra vote for? A bunch of bullshit. The uh, no, she I, she she actually had a, a pretty decent list. So what I ended up doing then is taking the fan votes and kind of ticking them off. So for the most part, what we picked, the fans was what they were sending in. Yeah. And then if there was something like an anomaly, well, how many votes did that one get? So I'm going through it, and I tell you by a landslide, uh, James Perez, James Perez, Ramon, yeah, yeah per, J- Ramon. Sorry, James Ramon. I get the Haller heads hitting it. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. I, Got the most votes out of anybody. I want to say that kid probably had 400 people send me messages. I've about seen him pushing it, though, on his page. 100%. I've seen him. So, so like, and hey, shout, shout out to my guy, Tedrick Macklin. Macklin was like, hey, man, why did my guy Smith get this, get the, he, he should have got the fighter of the knockout of the year. I was like, well, did you vote for him? Nope. You didn't. Nope. So, well, like, listen well, to the podcast. no. You're supposed to know that's who's supposed to win. Yeah. Shout out. Sh- shout out to Macklin. Oh, you wanna, you wanna, yeah, uh, dude, I love Tedrick Macklin, man. We got to get him back in there. Has everybody seen the 121 card? No. No. I don't think they have, yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. You, you want to talk about it a little bit? Just to, let's just do the, let's just run down the main card. Damn, real quick. Diego! I barely saw like our last okay, December look, look, card right before this. We're just going to run man. down the main card real quick. There's a shitload of fights. There's 21 fights on this yeah. card. So, uh, so one, 114 is Submission Hunter Pro, right? And then the following Sunday, 121 Fury FC 85. Fury yeah. FC 85 starting off the year strong, and. Hey, listen, when when, when, the Eric, main card. when Eric told me about the main event, so like we go back and forth, but we fill out an idea of who we want on the card, then we kind of fill in from there who we can make. He came back to me, he's like, hey, I just signed this. This is our main event. Josh Altum taking on Michael Aswell in Ooh, H-Town. Ooh, damn. Are you shitting me? And the only reason— And, it, and it's not going to be a title fight, no. probably because Altum needs a few more wins. Right, but two, but, but, but this— is a main event it's, banger. It's oh a my title god. Eliminator, but if you if you see up the records are next to the names. Yeah. If you look at these guys' records that are on this card, it's fucking unbelievable, man. Hey, listen to this co main event. This this co uh, our co main event and our feature fight, our main of <laughs> even our fourth fight down, our geez, this entire uh, card could be a main event. Our main card opener could be a main event. All right, so listen, I'm gonna go the opposite way. Jonathan Martinez, Jonathan Martin, five and one, taking on Manchester Kara, five and zero. Oh. Kara just beat Sam. Bam. Killer. Yeah. Hey, we just signed him and recently. Then we jump up. Listen, I'm telling you right now, right now today, this could be the fight of the night, fight of the year, fight of the decade. Lowen Tynes taking on Michael Murphy, eleven and two. Lowen. Damn. Coming out of one championship. Coming out of one. And Michael Murphy, say it on Michael the Hero Murphy. Murphy no, Michael is not Murder Murphy to stand in front of anybody. Michael's one of those guys that you gotta love because he, he's he about says it. Yes, he's about it. I got nothing to lose. Man. Hey, yeah. Hey, how about this? Eight and two. Alberto Trujillo taking on the returning back to his home in Fury, Alden Correa at seven, seven and, and two. two. What? Yeah, Alden boy, Correa. Alden Correa is back in the Fury fold. We also got undefeated Joel Maddock, 5-0, and taking on Justice Torres at 145. Woo! Our feature fight, Tracy Reader, 7-2, and taking Uh-oh. on Hector Sainz at 6-1. Oh! Nice. Listen, hey, listen to this co-main event. If this doesn't wet your panties, I don't know what will. My, dra- my draws are soiled. Luis Garule, 7-0, and taking on... The Snow Daddy, Josh Walker, oh, 8 and 1. Oh, man. Were you at a 125 or 135? A 135. Are oh, you shitting me? Man. That's how we're starting the year. Dude. That's just the main card, bro. Man. man. That's just the main and card. And I'm not saying that there's an amateur fight on there that's going to blow your rocks off, but uh, James Ramon and Sebastian Orvitas for the 125 title. Damn! <laughs> Come on! I'm not saying there's a Come on. there's a gangster named James Ford that's making his pro Ooh. debut. Uh oh! Fight Matt Costello. Uh oh! Uh, I, hey, I'm not saying Wendy Anderson's coming back. Wendy Anderson, who's she oh. fighting? Carson, Na- I don't really know Carson. Carson, Carson. All right. Carson Nash, All right. Hey. Well, hey, what, hey, what, what happened to that? I mean, I, if you guys don't want to talk about it, that's fine. Issues. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, she'll be back. So I, I, do, I was looking forward to seeing that fight, yeah. and it didn't happen. Of course, in March. We have so much going on. I didn't like have an opportunity to ask. The, the event was over. She's doing. And I'm like at doing, home. I'm like, dude, what happened to that fight? And you know who's coming back? She's doing better. Remember, uh, Anderson good, good, Guerrero. Good. Yeah. Who? who, who? Emerson? Emerson Guerrero. Yes, of course. Yeah. Emerson That's my homeboy. Justin Longoria. Bucks Wild, baby. Bucks oh, yeah. Wild fighting Justin Longoria. Just so busted Justin go- Longoria versus out? Emerson are Guerrero. Emerson's work for Wayans are. Diego, Diego, have you been go there? Go handle Bucks Wild. Bucks course. Wild. You'll be at Bucks yeah, Wild. He's been there. Uh, hey, hey, hey. He, 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 he used to be at the Bucks Wild on our ride home uh, off the Beltway, but he's yeah. not there. He's down in like towards Galveston he's at now. The one with the bigger booties. Yeah, yeah, he's down there. He got promoted. He's handling like he the got, real hey, shit. Dude, you see his reels, and he'd be like, "Yeah, yeah man." Down the Bucks Wild. All you, oh, you see is ass jiggling. In I, the back I, I scroll past that shit so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Diego screenshots it. <laughs> <laughs> Diego's, Diego's in the inbox. Hey, they call me the Velvet Throat. Y'all want me to come by? <laughs> Y'all want Daddy to come by over there? But right, no, hey, dude. Hey, man, yeah. he had like a, a really bright upside a few years back, and then yeah. you know whatever. I don't know but why I mean, he's been fight, gone. He fought CJ Vergara twice. Yeah, went to a draw with him one time. Yeah, dude. I mean, this, this hey, is all don't forget bad motherfucker, man. All this shit, and we're gonna start looking forward off, to seeing him come back. Start off the year with our inaugural Hall of Fame. We're doing, yeah, we're doing a Hall of Fame? We're doing a Hall of Fame. 
Wow. See, I got, whenever we were talking about this a few weeks ago, I got cut off. I like, you know, kind of you know, jokingly mentioned a name and then, you know, got roasted. But I didn't get to like go to the other names <laughs> that, I, that I was building to. Ray Trujillo. Yeah. yeah no, I, know where gonna, I know where he went. I know where First like, ballot Hall of Famer, Ray Trujillo? Trujillo? Hey, you want me to tell no? you or you want me to wear my hat like this? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, it's, it's kind of my job uh, as, yeah. as, as the side piece to get a reaction. Yeah, for sure. And whatever for I do, sure. man, you guys hey, kind of roast me. And that's shout fine. Out to Ray, back Ray, in the day. Ray, listen, Ray. Ray, Ray was a, is a thing, is man. a Houston OG and a he legend is. in Houston MMA and he had is. two of my favorite fights of all time. Him and Jace. Notorious for Owen Dude, Dude, ticket money. Him and Jace. Him and Jace. And then I I'm love sorry, Coke. No, I'm sorry. Classic. That was Jesus. Jesus and him. Classic Coke is delicious. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting? Yes. Yeah, so we'll have our, our inaugural Hall of Fame, and I, I think. That's some, dude, we had some amazing candidates uh, for for Hall of Fame. So are we doing and it? Where, yeah. where, where, where's the Where's the Hall of Fame going to be? Where's the facility going to be? Back of his pool. All is right, the, let's go. Where, the man where cave. We'll, where will ten bottles of Howler? Woo! It's it, listen. The, it's it's in our hearts. But 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 they're they're, they're going to get some stuff. We're going to make it. Happen. Great yeah. response. We're, Great we're response. Gonna, we're we're going to make something cool. Uh, I know we, we we got a few more shows before we end twenty twenty three. But man, this has been a crazy year. An amazing year. And man, thank you guys for everything that you guys have done uh, from from the production to being the amazing voice and make the way you got the hardest job. Are you live? You can't fuck up. You have one or two times, but 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 you can't just. I hey, think hey. they were undercards too. I don't hey, think you've no, ever messed ex- up on the main exactly. Card. Hey, whenever and whenever that shit happens, yeah. I tell Eric, dude, I'm glad that that didn't happen on the main yeah. card, dude. When that happens, it pisses me off. Hey, I take it hey, very hey, personally. Shout out, very Jose. Shout out, yeah. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Wayne, man. I get, God, I get hit damn. up. See, they, they don't even know. Like the fight pass, people watch on fight pass. They don't even know. Like they're tuned in. The undercard on on the Facebook live stream. Whenever Brian Duvall is in my ear, and he's like, and go. Wayne, and I'm like, good evening, fight fans. Welcome, blah, blah, blah. And the mic isn't on. Yeah. God. Oh, you got me yelling. Damn. The no Let's go, Wayne. Let's no, go. You know, <laughs> no, that, that <laughs> is. Hey, we're going to go. No, we're not going to go. Yeah, that, that's what it is. It's we're, never you telling me to go. So, hey, we can't go yet. I'm like, dude, they're yeah. like telling me to go. We're changing Arr. shit up at the last we're, we're live, pal. But, man, you guys. Anyhow, I, good times. Seriously, I, I I don't think sometimes you guys get enough credit for all the amazing things you guys do. Y'all are awesome, man. And, and thank you. For all that you all that you've poured into here, and I'm I'm telling you, 2024 is gonna be a crazy year. It's a team effort, and and it's all building to 2024 and 2025 and forward. So you know, hey, once again, before we get out, our amazing sponsors. Thank you guys, Live Oak Vodka, Howler Head Whiskey, OnlyFans, Space City Collective, Kamora Tattoo Company, Sheath Underwear, Private Label label Bags. I still love the backpack, the Defender Law Firm. I feel like I'm missing somebody. I feel like I'm missing somebody. Aces performance <laughs> exhaust, you baby. You need a backpack or a tote bag? Eh, you know, I've got a couple of tote bags. A backpack, a backpack. would be good. You know, for, like for the laptop and the, the mic flags and, you know, the other things that I have to carry to the show. Hey, and make sure you guys hit up our OnlyFans, OnlyFans.com slash Fury Fighting. And wait. OnlyFans.com slash Fury Fighting. Baby, the time for talk is over. This has been Fury Unleashed. <laughs> That was the drunkest monkey ever. And now Houston, Texas makes some noise because the time for talk is over. It's time to unleash the fury.